Hello everybody. It's been a while since I've been on here. This is Josh from Julie's Canine Academy. Julie's getting ready for the day. We got a nice, it's gonna be a beautiful Monday. I'm gonna give a second for everybody to join. Got a little topic today. I'm gonna ride off from our recent video with uh, the, the human aggressive dog, Buddy. Got a lot of attention. And I wanted to, I wanted to get on here and talk about the uh, the thing we always talk about, which is leading our dogs. And um, I guess I want to get more in the habit of getting more involved. Uh, the winter's over, so the springtime's here, summertime's coming around, and this is when I feel most active and productive. And so I'm going to start sharing my my thoughts again. I, I think this is a good platform for it because you know. Instagram's great. So today we're going to talk about uh, leading being less of physical of a physical skill and more of a mentality. And the reason is, is because Julie and I do this professionally. We've been doing it for a while. And when we're working with our clients who have troubled dogs, which is oh, by the way, before I continue, how's the audio? Can somebody let me know how the audio is? Before I go, because I got a new headset on, and if it if it doesn't sound good, let me know. Okay, I'll wait until I think I've got this thing working properly. Can you guys hear me? All good. Thank you, K Grams. Awesome. You guys are awesome. So we run into a, we run into um, we run into an, uh, a struggle, a common struggle. Uh, when we're working with a client who's struggling with their dog, if they lack a certain mentality, which I will be diving into on this, it feels like heavy lifting. You can teach the skills, you can teach all about the techniques, you can teach the commands, you can teach them how to use them. But if the mentality is not there, and it's and there is a mentality that, that, that really works against this type of work that does not allow the person to be successful, and I'm gonna jump into that, then it almost feels like the person's just never gonna be as successful as they could be, okay? And so the common thing we see, and like the, the red flags that we see when we're talking to people, and listen, people change in the course of this program. I watch people have that light bulb moment, and, and I see them, and I see them grasp the concepts and, and, and start to change the way they think. And as soon as they, they lock into that right mentality, it's almost like it's a breeze, right? But the mentality that works against leading a dog is that, that over-the-top nurturing. And uh, I guess it comes from a very uh, a nurturing standpoint. And for an example, if you've got a dog, let's just use a, an aggressive dog, for example, because y you see this. You see this with aggressive dogs, okay? I had Buddy recently, okay? And he brings up a lot of conversation. He brings it up in public when I see people. I get to see this mentality that I'm about to dive into. Um, I get to see it with the owners. I get to see it with people who comment. I get to see it all over the place. And it's, it's this mentality of, you know, here, here's some red flags because it's a hard thing to describe. I've got this aggressive dog. He bites people. He has bit people. We put muzzles on him when for walks for safety, especially for the owners, just in case anything ever went wrong. Hey, you got the muzzle on, it's safety. Now, what do you think one of the first questions I get? What do you think it is? Not just from, not just from the owners, I'm not, I'm not calling out a specific set of people here, from a lot of people on the streets, from people who I have conversations with about, about a dog who has aggression. It's, well, does he have to wear the muzzle? That's a red flag of that mentality that works against it, right? Or, or how about, does he have to be in these commands? Or when, when can we get him off the program? You know, that kind of stuff. That mentality is more of that nurturing side, right? It's like, aw. And you, you can see in one of the videos recently, I have a guy come up to me, and this happens like every other minute when you're out in public. I have Buddy out, he's on a muzzle, we're in Home Depot. A grown man, grown man, older than me, you know, comes up to me. He wants to touch the dog. I say no because he bites, um, you know. And the first word out of his mouth, and I don't care. It doesn't matter. You can't hide it. The first word out of his mouth is, aw. I just said, this dog bites people. And, and the first emotional response is, 
Aw, poor dog. That's a problem. That person will, will end up getting that dog to bite people because the mentality is, aw, poor dog, he bites people, rather than like, oh no, we can't have that. Oh, there's no way this dog's biting people with me. That's the mentality difference. And, and it doesn't make a difference who knows the techniques, who's got the, 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 you know, who's got 10 years of experience and who doesn't. I don't care if you got 30 years of experience. If your mentality is more on the nurturing side, you're not going to be able to deal with predators that are dangerous. Period. And it doesn't just go for aggressive dogs. You can you see dogs, you know, just just dogs who are annoying, who are causing stress because they don't listen, they break all the rules, all this stuff. The first thought is, "Aw, poor dog." You know? And another thing you see is like all these dogs that are struggling, all the dogs that are struggling out there, we got to get them, you know, we got to make sure they got the most expensive food. We got to make sure that they're, that they're on the most comfy bed. I mean, dude, let me tell you something. The other day, no names, working with a dog. And the reason I'm doing this is because I need people to start waking up because it doesn't work. It's getting dogs to lose their lives. It's getting people injured. It's, 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 a, it's a plague that's going around uh, our country and probably other countries. And it's a mentality. And so, you know, I got this dog in our program. And the thing is, is like, we kennel our dogs when we're not home, <laughs> you know? That's what we recommend so dogs don't get in trouble. We kennel them when they're sleeping. This dog's dangerous. This dog, this dog, you know, potentially could tear up the house, potentially could be barking out the window while you're gone. And so we say, hey, easy fix, get a nice kennel, have the dog in the kennel. What's the first thing after I say that that comes out of the person's mouth? It's like, well, is he going to be comfortable? Because he likes to stretch out when he, when he lays down. You know, he likes to, there's a certain position he likes to get into. It's like, whoop, right there. I don't care how much I teach you right now. I don't care how much I teach you about the techniques. That's not the problem. The problem is how you're thinking. Listen, this dog's dangerous. This dog ha has torn up the house. This dog has, <laughs> has like busted screens out of windows, barking at things. And the first thing you concern yourself with when I say put it in a kennel is, is he going to be comfortable? Is he going to be able to stretch? Is he going to be able, it's like, like I get where you're coming from. I get where you're coming from, but that is, that is the poison. That is the thing that makes it for a trainer like myself. When I'm working with a person like that, it is next to impossible to break through the wall of whatever you got going on as far as your perspective on, on the world and on dogs and on people. You're more concerned about is the animal comfortable rather than like, hey, this animal's not gonna be ruining my life anymore. This, this dog's going to start listening. There's no way I'm gonna let him, you know, bust through my windows, chew up my furniture and bite at people. So you can meet people and I do and I feel great when I still feel, when I meet the few people that I meet, talking to on the streets, talking to through the comments, where their perspective's already there. They're not dog trainers. They were just raised in a way where their view is very similar to mine and they have nothing to do with dog training. You know, and, and, and I mean, this, this, this mentality leaks over to, to raising our kids. You guys have heard me say it a million times. Um, people, you know, the school systems, everything. It's, in, it's everywhere and it's like, we got to make sure that they're comfortable and they're nurtured and we don't put any thought into taking control. And the thing is, is once you take control and you have this mentality of like tough love rather than just like mushy, mushy love is what is needed. You know, it's still love. And the thing is, is like tough love is more difficult because you've got to go out of your way to lead. Leading is not easy. You know, anyone I've seen people comment on here. Tyson's owner commented. She knows. She knows all about it. I'm reading your comment right now. Yeah, the awe, but, but it looks uncomfortable, right? Exactly, and that mentality, those people get dogs killed. I don't, I hate to say it, but they do, because if they owned Tyson, he'd bite again. He'd, he'd end up killing a, a, an animal because they don't, because they said, oh, it looks uncomfortable. You know what looks uncomfortable? The cat that he just shook and broke its neck. That looks uncomfortable. But it's just like it's not in their heads. You can't break through to these people. They, they, there's something wrong you know because the thing is it's not reality 
it's not even it's not even close to re the reality is, is that dog has prey drive which you know to a level that you need to be on top of him to keep it in check and he and he is a great dog and you can keep him in check and he is loyal and he is wonderful and you live a good life with him and he's enjoyable but he's got the right he's got an owner who has the right mentality you know and you know so basically this little life here is 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 addressing that that the mentality of a leader is everything. the connections hiccuping i'm going to move a little bit so yeah that mentality goes a long way if i see somebody shift in their mentality i'm like they're going to be just fine i even if they're still fumbling with the remote and they're still they're still new to our techniques they're still new to understanding the lifestyle is if i see that shift in their mentality where they where they now they want to lead they want they want to make sure that this dog is under their control and i see that click these people are going to be fine these people are going to only continue to improve and life is going to get better if they cannot have that mentality shift they will it doesn't matter this dog will struggle that they're with and then the next dog they get they're going to create the same dog now i used to live in frederick and we have a neighbor that had a dog that barked at us every time we walked by and they hated us walking by because the dog would bark you know what happened eventually that dog got old and passed away and they got a new dog two new dogs and those dogs literally became the same dog that they had before it did the same bad behaviors so people can create like you give the person with the wrong mentality a dog they're going to create a, the worst version of that dog so let me read some other comments here when a client when a client or le or led says that do you fire them or try to teach them i'm not sure what that means but uh i i'm not Oh, 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 I do know what that means. Do I work with the client or do I move on? Now, I like to give people a chance. What it is is you got to get in this industry, you got to get really good at when you're talking to people to really understand their character and see if they have potential. See if they, if they just need that knowledge to shift or if they're just in la-la land and always will be in la-la land. The amount of, like, could you change that person? Maybe. But the amount of resources and time it would take to change that person. And let me tell you something. Their age matters too. Just like a dog. The older the dog, the more difficult it can be to, to change a dog's mentality. The older the person too. You get a 70-year-old in who has their beliefs in, locked in. You're going to find, and, and it, it varies person to person, but you will find that they're going to be harder to get them to change the way they think. You get a 20-year-old in they're malleable it's like they're like they're still open to learn you know they don't understand the world fully they probably know that they're still sinking in information and trying to develop the way they view the world but you get somebody who's old and set in their ways it's just like a dog can it be done it, yeah but it might just kill you doing it especially if they're resistant especially if they're still just like and here's the thing certain people like that nurturing side more because it fills that void it it does something for the human it rewards the human okay it makes us feel good to go buy the dog a toy um you know obviously you see the dog playing with the toy it feels good i'm not saying don't buy a dog's toys but that's just an example so you live your whole day just trying to feel good around your dog that's that selfish act that we talked about that's why those dogs i can take i can look i can watch an interaction with a with a dog and an owner for for 30 seconds and tell you uh and know all i need to know you know what i mean it doesn't take long to see how that person views that dog and and therefore that's why that dog is misbehaving because the truth is you don't need top end training to have a well behaved dog you don't need training at all to have a dog who has the mentality of i listen to my owner you just have to be that right person so one of the things we say all the time when someone's just not getting it it's like hey if you didn't buy this dog and somebody like who has the mentality such as myself bought this dog this dog wouldn't be in the place it is today the problem started when you bought the dog right and it's like that's hard to hear that hurts but that's that we'll pull that card out if we have to if somebody's just fighting us and it's like wait a minute you see that this dog is doing great with a person like myself or a person like this person who has this mentality right it's not that i'm a dog trainer it's not that it's not just that because I know plenty of guys where I came from and gals that live up in the mountains don't know a lick about training but they know about animals and they understand they have that mentality they're not struggling with their animals 
yeah, they might not have a fancy program where they have like e-collar heel and all that stuff, but their dogs listen because that's the relationship that they form with animals. It's just how it goes. And it doesn't mean that that person doesn't love that dog and doesn't nurture that dog. They, of course they do, but they have boundaries and they have lines of what they're willing to put up with from, a, from an animal, from a dog. And, and maybe it's the way they're raised. A lot of the time it is the way they're raised. There's a reason why, and this is a real statistic from us in our company, most of our clients, 99.9% .9 of our clients are city people. They aren't people who live on a farm. <laughs> Can you see what I'm saying? So generation after generation, you get people who grow up who don't deal with animals, who, don't, who forget about how it works out there in nature. They get dogs for different reasons than somebody out in the country. And that's, I know that that's not a foolproof, like everybody in the city doesn't get it. I'm not saying that. Or, or everybody in the country gets it. I'm not saying that. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing. I'm telling you that 90% of our clients are female. And I'm telling you that, that if I had to take a guess, it's like 99.9 .9 of them are coming out of the cities. And, they, and, and they, they just don't understand how to live with an animal, let alone a dog, and get that relationship to the point, to the, have a relationship where the animal understands that what you say is not, uh, it's not a suggestion. This is how you live with humans. And so, as somebody who does this for a living every single day, and we're about to have a go home with Miss Luna, the pity who uh, has pretty explosive uh, leash reactivity, Morning, Russ. Good to see you. I'm glad. To, I'm glad you stopped in, man. Thank you very, very much. Uh, very good dog training. I'm, I'm glad that you stopped in too. I'm gonna try to do some more interactive stuff now that uh, winter's over and I'm feeling pretty good. The sun's out. The birds are chirping. But this is what it all comes down to, you know. If, if I if I see somebody who's struggling with a dog, I look at them to see because it's never the dog. You can always get. Yeah, the dog might have some genetical issues, uh, like Tyson's owner here, uh, Phyllis. She knows all about that, but. If the owner just doesn't look like they're there with their mentality, they're not living in reality. They're not living uh, where the dogs live, you know, which is which is nature. They're going to struggle. They, they have this very Disney-like, you know, not putting Disney down. I love Disney movies, but it's not reality. And, and that's where they're living. And you wonder how they make it through their day. You're like, how did you get this far without dying? And it's like, oh, yeah, that's right, because our society is pretty easy to live in. It's pretty comfy. It's pretty comfy. So you can imagine how people get a skewed, uh, skewed view. But that's what it comes down to. Leading is a mentality first. It's not a skill set yet. It's not, it's not can you, do you know how to train the heel? Do you know how to, to correct the dog? Of course, those are all things. It starts with a mentality. So that's why a lot of our work goes into philosophy, goes into talking to people. Because we, can, we know we're right. This is, a, this is just something we know. We understand that this is accurate information. Yes, dear? They're here. Oh, they're a little early. Okay, I'll, I'm gonna wrap this up. Can you bring a plate set out? Yep. Thank you. Luna's owners are here. They're, they're 15 minutes early, just the way I like it. She's gonna be doing a go home, so in a few hours, probably later on in the afternoon, later on in the evening, you'll be able to see her go home, and it'll be, um, you know, good. I'm gonna film that one, so I'm gonna have to jump off here in a few minutes, but. I want to leave you guys with that on this beautiful Monday morning. I'm going to head inside. It's, uh, it's a real thing. And, and, and so if you're training people, you know. <laughs> I don't have to tell you. It's a mentality thing. So if you can get that mentality right in people and you can get them to see things for how they actually are and you can get them feeling encouraged and actually inspired to lead because, listen, it's, it's a privilege when you get a dog finally under your leadership you can do so much with them. Your life, the dog's life is so much better. Your life is better. And it's very rewarding. Now, the people who struggle, they're the people who don't get it. They, you either get it or you don't, right? And so if you don't get it, you're struggling. If you get it, chances are I probably won't even see you. You probably won't even come to my program. you probably be able to train your dog yourself because the dog actually listens. So there you go. Leadership is, is a mentality with these dogs and you know you got it or you don't yes you can change people yes i've seen people change who i didn't think were going to but by the end i see that change and they're never the thing is is that person's not the, never the same again they carry a level of confidence i mean literally you want you see them i see them months later they're walking with their shoulders back 
They got their chest up. They feel good. They feel confident. They shake my hand firmer. Like it changes that person. And so, yeah, it's a mentality. You got it or you're struggling, right? <laughs> not that it's not, it's not easy being a leader. It's work. You got to wake up. You got to be disciplined. You know, it's like the dogs are there for you every day and, and they need you because you're the leader. You can't take a day off. But if you can take pride in that and understand that that's just how the world goes round, it pays off. And there's no other way to, to live with a dog. It's the best way to live with a dog, okay? I mean, you're going to meet people with all sorts of different mentalities. I met a lady once <laughs> a few years back. It just threw me completely off. I'm walking my dogs that I'm training through the, through the uh, store. She sees that they're in a command. You know, I walk up to the register. I put them in a sit. You know, I tell them to down. I do my thing. She's watching me the whole time. I'm sitting here thinking like she's impressed, right? And then I walk by her and she says, I don't believe in training dogs, it's cruel. Just training them in general, just getting them trained. Because there's beliefs out there that you should, just let, you should just never tell a dog what to do. And if that's your belief, then you should just never buy a dog. <laughs> you, should, you should just not have a dog. Okay, so good morning, I'm in, I'm out, I'm headed out there. Up, uh, it looks like Julie's already getting started. We're gonna go get Luna headed home, do this go home, and then get our day started. I got some new training techniques coming you guys' way on how to teach the recall and the stay command. It's stuff that um, I think I've played around with, with in the past, but I'm bringing it back out, so you can look forward to that. It's gonna be some fun stuff, hopefully. Um, it's actually fun for me, it's a fun way to train. And I'm gonna share that with you guys, and it's probably gonna be over on Facebook. And I'm gonna do it with the little buddy today. We got a guy named Buddy who's really small. Um, and he's, he's a fun little guy to work with. And we're gonna show you guys some new techniques, okay? Always fun. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much for joining in. Um, see you over on Facebook if you wanna be over there. We'll be doing some stuff over there today. Okay, talk to you guys later.